chapter seven, we're gonna talk all about chord charts. Now, in the very beginning, we talked about the traditional notation system with the staff, the clefs, the notes, the rest, etc. The chord chart system is uh, kind of more of a modern creation. It's been around for 100 years or so. The traditional staff system goes back four or 500 years. But most of what you're gonna see in modern pop rock music is a chord chart system. So we're gonna dive into that whole subject. That's interesting. Inevitably, in every seminar I do, every workshop, somebody comes up and says, well, uh, I play by ear. You know, I just hear the music and I, I, I know what it is. You know, why do I really have to know how to read a chord chart or read the traditional staff notation system? Do I really have to learn how to read? And uh, it, it just occurs to me, it's kind of like, you know, when your baby is born, you know, obviously the first thing they learn how to do is they learn how to speak. They say, mama, daddy. And some musicians are like that. In fact, a lot of musicians, you learn how to play before you learn how to read. But I would often tell people like, you know, after your baby learns how to say mama and daddy and uh, I'm hungry, I'm sleepy, are you gonna not teach him how to read English? I mean, it's one thing to be able to speak English, but you definitely wanna go on and learn how to read English and write English. Well, the same thing's true with music. It's great to play by ear. I mean, definitely music is sound. Uh, the best music you're ever gonna play is the music that you internalize, you put in your heart and then it just pours out of you. But at some point, you know, when you get a great idea, you gotta be able to write it down. You gotta be able to document it. You gotta have some kind of a method, either a chord chart or a traditional uh, notation system to hand it to your pals, to send it across the country to other musicians. So definitely learning how to read and write music is an important thing. It's an important part of your arsenal if you're gonna become uh, all the musician that you can be. So uh, if this is new for you, we're gonna walk through it slow, but uh, chord charting is really, uh, there's two aspects to it. There's the reading of the chord chart, and we're gonna get into that. And then we're also gonna talk about the writing of the chord charts, how you can write chord charts that are definitely gonna sound better when you put them in front of musicians. So we're gonna cover all of those aspects in this chapter coming up. So when you compare the chord chart system with the traditional notation system, um, the difference is this. When you look at a chord chart, you're required to improvise. In other words, you're not really given every specific note and rest that you're gonna play like in the traditional system. Basically, you're just given a chord symbol and you have to look at that chord and symbol and instantly analyze what notes are in that chord and you have to design your own rhythmic figure that you're gonna play so it does involve uh, a fair bit of improvisation. It would be, uh, think about it this way, you know, like there's a, when you text on your iPhone, for instance, you know, you use a lot of shorthand, you use a lot of abbreviation, versus if you're getting ready to write a resume for a job, or, uh, you know, if you're writing a book like this, or a screenplay, you know, you're gonna definitely write in a more formal style, you're gonna be sure the spelling is correct, all that sort of thing. So it's kind of that way with chord charts and traditional notation system. Now, you might find this interesting in, uh, you know, lest you think that the chord chart is some new invention. For instance, back in box time, or even like when Handel was writing the Messiah, sometimes they would write out the full orchestration in the big choruses, like the Hallelujah Chorus. But uh, in the little in-between sections called the recitatives, where it's just, uh, you know, just one soloist and a harpsichord, maybe a cello, uh, you know, sort of telling the story. Basically, what they used is a shorthand, similar to a chord chart. Back then, they called it figured bass. So it's a setup where, really, they would just write in the bass note and a couple of numbers that would spell out the triads, basically, on top of that bass note, which is very, very similar to the chord, system, uh, chord chart system that we use today. So, but the concept is the same, where it does require the player to look at the chord chart and improvise the part. So you're kind of like creating the part on the spot. And that's what we're gonna dive into next. The three steps that you need to do as a player to read a chord chart and turn it into music. There's a great chart in the Language of Music book that spells out all of the common chord symbols and the notes that are in those chords and you know some different shorthand uh, uh, symbols that you might find representing all those common chords. Basically, the first step you've got to know when it comes to reading a chord chart is you've got to be able to analyze these chord symbols quickly. Uh, I mean, it's almost got to get to the point where it's instantaneous, where you see a symbol that 
you instantly know what notes are in that chord, so you can design your part. Now, there's really, when it comes to reading a chord chart, there's three steps that you need to do. Uh, and this has to happen just like lightning. The first thing you have to do is you have to analyze the chord symbol. You have to decide a voicing for that chord. We talked about voicing in the chapter before. And you have to decide a rhythmic figure that fits the style of the piece. So, and, and definitely these are the sort of things that, you know, you're, you're not going to start tomorrow if this is your first time at reading a chord chart and be fast and brilliant. This is one of those things that just increases. The more you do it, the better you get. And, uh, I mean, it's really not going to be that long before a lot of the basic chords are just going to become like second nature to you. You're going to see the chord and your hands are going to play it. So if you are just getting started, be patient, give yourself some time, but definitely the more you can do it, the better you're going to be and the faster you're going to get at it. So you need to analyze the symbol, decide the voicing, and decide the rhythmic figure. Now, there's three things that I like to do before you even ever start a piece. I mean, I sort of feel like, you know, they say that the battle is won or lost before the first shot's ever fired. I really think that's true of reading a chord chart. You know, later today, I've got to walk into a session where I'm going to have a lot of charts put in front of me. I mean, typically, I'm the guy writing the charts. But occasionally, I have to walk into a situation where a guy's going to hand me a piece of music, and I've got to, you know, take it off the page and turn it into music. So there's three things that I do before the piece ever starts. And let me, uh, let me go through those with you.